I'd like to show you how to use a very exciting and um, open-ended tool called Google Earth. Uh, this is a little bit different than most of Google's products because it's not a web application. It's a program that must be downloaded to your computer. Uh, in order to do so, just go to Google and type in Google Earth download and click on the first result there and there you go just uh, agree and click download and um, take a few minutes to install it is very important that you have a um, robust web connection to use Google Earth it does connect to the internet and um, pull data from Google's servers um, so keep that in mind when using it um, this is what the program looks like and um, there's a lot of different things you can do with it. In this episode, uh, I'm just going to kind of give you the overview of um, what the different commands are and some of the different things that you can do with Google Earth. And then in some uh, future episodes, I'll show you some neat things that you could do with Google Earth in the classroom. So let's just go through the tools first of all. It works a little bit like Google Maps. Um, up here in the top left corner, you've got a search box, and you can type in any address just like you would in Google Maps and it will take you there. Down below we have the places box and these are places that you would save and revisit and I'll spend um, an entire episode talking about how to create places um, for use in your classroom. Below that is the layers um, box and these are uh, essentially places created by Google. These cannot be edited um, added to or subtracted. Um, they're there, they're provided by Google, they update them regularly with new features. And if you just take a quick tour through, this is where you'll find things like your um, your borders for countries and cities. You can turn those on and off by clicking. And if we expand that, um, you've got even more options. You can also turn on the roads if you want, and if you want to see highways. Um, there's lots of different things here. Um, let's look at the gallery these are some partners with Google um, uh, National Geographic New York Times uh, have some content there so by clicking on these boxes we can turn on those features and they will load um, I'm gonna zoom in using this scroll bar right here real easy just go up to zoom in out to zoom back we'll zoom in and as we get closer the content that I turned on will just start to to show up. So the yellow square would be National Geographic. You can click on that and see some uh, content from them. Um, there's YouTube uh, videos embedded here by location. Uh, I can view those as well. And then uh, even have Google News linked. And these are news reports linked to the place where the story has occurred. So I can turn those on and off, and you can see that they disappear when I do so. So we'll go ahead and turn off National Geographic for now. Google News, just go to the basics. So I'm going to zoom back out, get more of the overview. And uh, let me talk about these tools over on the right side. We talked about the zoom bar. Um, right here, we've got the incremental pan button, um, which you can spin the earth by using that, you know, uh, east to west or north to south, if you like. And then up at top, we have a compass that uh, does similar do that and that uh, orients you directionally. Um, you can use these. I always find it much easier just click and drag and uh, much more rewarding. It's always fun to spin the globe, watch it spin, um, you can drag and drop. Uh, Google Earth works great with smart boards. It's a really fun application to project on a smart board and manipulate with um, you know, the, the smart board uh, tools. So that could be a lot of fun. Um, up at the top here, the top toolbar, we have some additional options. Um, don't use these as much. We've got a place marker, so you can add your own custom place um, that you want to save for later, and I'll show you how to do that in a later episode. Um, we have some measuring tools where you can actually create uh, polygons and lines to um, mark something if uh, you're interested in it. So that could be cool. Um, so we have polygons, paths, uh, image overlay, these are all kind of drawing tools. Um, this is the record a tour button. 
and uh, this can be a lot of fun. You can actually record a virtual tour from place to place, and um, I'll spend a, an episode uh, showing you how to do that. This is a new feature. This is uh, historical imagery, and um, it's pretty simple. It, uh, Google has just stored all of their imagery in some places all the way back to the 1930s, and by scrolling here, you can see how the landscape has changed over the past um, 80 years or so. So that can be um, a neat classroom tool to see changes in the environment. Uh, some areas of the country and of the world have better data than others. So this won't work well in every area, but it uh, be interesting to take a look at. Um, we have the night view, which will adjust the map according to the time of day. So you can see when it's light on one side of the earth, it's dark on the other. Um, this is neat right here. Uh, this is, program is called Google Earth, but um, there's also Google Sky, Google Mars, and Google Moon. And um, uh, it works pretty much the same way. You've got a, a virtual map of Mars, of the moon, and of the sky. And I'll um, explore those in a later episode as well. Uh, a neat application for math class is the um, measuring tool. Uh, you can measure the distance between any two points very simply just by drawing a line. You can see that that distance there is uh, 3,661 miles. Um, that would be fun to do in math class. Um, and then we have some options for sharing, um, emailing, pictures, printing, and then viewing in Google Maps um, online if you wanted to do that. So this is just a brief overview of uh, Google Earth. Um, there's several other episodes in which I will go over more specifics uh, about it, how to use it, and some interesting classroom applications. So if you're interested, please tune into those.